Welcome to the SoFlo Real Estate Show, Ask Athena and Julie Anything, the go-to podcast where we answer all your burning questions about all things in real estate here in South Florida. Whether you're a first-time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or just simply curious about the market, we're here to give you expert advice and insider tips. My name is Athena Chalikas Brokas. I'm an award-winning realtor in Western Florida. In today's episode, we're tackling two big topics. The first one are the five steps of closing a real estate transaction. And for those of you buying a home, what you should do to prepare to move in on move-in day. My co-host, Julie Dinda Financial Radius Group, is ready to dive into this hot topic and how to navigate the home buying journey from offer to move in. Welcome, Julie. Thanks for having me. As always, I'm really excited to be here. Closing such an important part of the buying process, and there's a lot that buyers can do to make that transi- transaction smooth. You know, Julie, you're absolutely right. Um, moving day and closing day is a big day. It's filled with excitement, and as a realtor, I love it because I'm handing the keys to my client. As an uh, as a loan officer, you're handing money to your client, and our client is getting a brand new home. So on the buying side, it's a beautiful day. Absolutely. I love it. So let's dive into those five essential steps for closing. And then let's talk about how a buyer can properly prepare for moving into their new home. Are you ready to get started, Julie? I'm ready. Okay. Step one is the offer and acceptance period. You know, Julie, let's kick things off and talk about really what's involved here. So offer and acceptance is the first step where the buyer makes an offer on a property. So, and the seller has the choice to accept it, reject it, or counter it. Uh, So once both of the parties agree on the price and the terms, they sign the contract. And this is the big moment that officially begins that closing process. It is. And the contract is crucial because it outlines all the terms. The purchase contract not only includes the price, but it includes the contingency, the closing date, and other specific conditions. You know, both parties are both parties are now legally committed. That's so important that they have to review and understand every detail before signing that contract because things do go sideways in a transaction. For sure. And for buyers, it's a great time to confirm that they're comfortable with everything in the agreement. And yeah, when- because once it's signed, that contract serves as a roadmap for the rest of the closing steps. Perfectly said. It's the foundation for everything else that happens in that closing process. Yeah. You know, and as a realtor, I, I oversee all those terms that are met. So exactly. You know, Julie, listen, this is the thing. As a realtor, I am in that helicopter making sure that everyone is performing and that their situation arises as it normally does, that that situation is not only found, but they're resolved. You know, for example, I oversee the lending process. We talk all the time when we have a client, right? Once a week, we're on that phone call and we are reviewing all of our files together. So I oversee the lending process, the title process, the inspections, the legal documents, legal translations, the escrow, and so much more. And as I tell my client, no decisions are made without my involvement. Why? Simple, because we are here to protect our client's deposit of thousands and thousands of dollars. It is so important. Even little stuff, you like, know, I hey, seem- I'm going to go, I'm going to go buy a new couch. So, like, you're going to be like, not yet, you're not. So funny you say that. That's my number one do not do <laughs> with my buyers. <laughs> as soon as they get that pre-approval, normally from you, it's the first thing I say, you're not buying furniture, you're not buying a <laughs> car, you're not paying down your debt. You are doing nothing but sitting there every day doing exactly what you're supposed to do. No decisions are made without your team's blessing. So, you know, I see, you know, many times the transaction can go sideways, Julie. We just had a situation the other day where one of our clients went rogue and the client put a deposit up at risk, a 20% deposit at risk. Oh, wasn't that scary? 
it was so scary. I mean, you were so on top of it and you, you know, completely handled it. But, you know, some people just aren't, you know, and, and the communication's not there with the lender. And so we were able to, you know, I was able to let you know what was going on and you were able to jump right on it, fix it and have it under control immediately. And we were able to close uh, very successfully. Yeah, we were, you know, going rogue. Like I told my client, do not go rogue. <laughs> um, well, and I understand it. You know, they go into contract. A first time buyer is into contract and they're still shopping, which they should not do. Shopping for rates. Well, in this case, our client decided to shop when they had no time left in their contract. So what was going to happen is their loan approval date was going to come and go. And they had no, they would have had no loan approval from their secondary lender and they would have lost their deposit. There was no way this lender was going to be able to fulfill the terms of the contract because they did not have enough time to perform. And so it was, that was a scary time, Julie. So it <laughs> it's great having a partner like you because, you know, we worked in tandem and we resolved the issue. So um, always a good day when that happens. So let's move in to step number two, the home inspection and appraisal. You know, um, what can buyers expect here? Well, it's simple. Once the offer is accepted, Julie, the buyer arranges a home inspection to check for any hidden issues in the property. An inspector goes through the entire house and reports any repairs that need to be addressed and any conditions that are unknown. You know, it's a really important step because it ensures that the buyer understands exactly what they're buying. So um, I love being at the inspection. And if there are issues that are found during the inspection? Well, if there are significant issues, <laughs> the buyer can renegotiate with the seller for repairs, a price reduction, or even this, Julie, they simply walk away, get their money back, depending on their contract. And then, and then the lender will typically order an appraisal to confirm the property's value. This is a requirement for most loans, and that actually helps protect the lender and the buyer from overpaying. Yeah, so it's really a step for everyone's peace of mind. You know, there's many times where, you know, a renegotiation takes place. But at the end, if both parties agree to move forward, the buyer can feel confident in the condition and the value of the home. And the lender gets assurance that the loan is going to be, you know, moving toward closing. So it's really a nice process and it's an important process. Exactly. And the inspection and the appraisal, and once that inspection and the appraisal are complete, the closing process can actually move forward out there with a clearer picture of what the final terms will look like. Yeah. And I think this brings us right back to the beginning of this podcast, Julie, that the terms and the conditions are equally as important as understanding what the price is. Um, Julie, just as an offshoot here, but also, you know, it is somewhat related. Can you share an example of when an appraisal came in lower than the offer price? You know, what are some solutions from a lending perspective? Yeah, so one of our most important parts that we talk about all the time is the pre-approval, right? And in that pre-approval process, I can actually uh, use that time to find out, you know, is the is the buyer putting 20% down? If the buyer is putting 20% down and it comes back at a lower amount where the buyer has to come to the table with more money, you know, maybe we just restructure the loan and they put 10% down instead of 10 instead of 20% down. And then that way they can get the home, you know, they pay the difference in the, you know, because they really want it. They pay the difference in the, in the overage of the appraisal and then boom, they still have 10% down and they're still good to go. If I know what kind of stuff we can work with, it helps us in that aspect. Obviously they can come back to you and say, well, what do you mean it came back that way? Why did it come back that way? Can we come back to them and offer different things? So at that time, that's why it's so important to have a team that works together really well um, because that way, you know, Athena can come to me and say, oh, no, no, no. Look at these three houses closed for this amount of money. So there should be no reason. Then I can go back to the appraisal and go, well, what about these three houses? And then they can adjust and, and, and do all that as well. So that really helps, I think. No, you're absolutely right. Those are great points, Julie. Thanks for sharing those. 
So let's move on to step number three, finalizing financing. Wow, this is a big one for buyers who are using a mortgage to buy a property. Yeah, yes, absolutely. After the appraisal, the lender will actually finalize the loan. And that includes re reviewing all the buyer's financial documents again, making sure they're still employed and good to go. During this time, buyers should avoid making any financial changes like opening those lines of credit, switching jobs, um, you know, doing anything, you know, like we had, we had one, one lady completely, like she went in to go get her car changed, like her oil change on her lease. And what ended up happening was they were like, you know, her debt to income was, was closed. And they were like, you know, she has this expensive car and she's, I don't even need this expensive car. So let me get into this new car. Let me get into this new car. And then um, it'll be $500 less than my other car. But what she didn't understand is now she had two loans because the other car wasn't going to be paid off for 30 days. So now she had the 1500 plus the 500 So we actually had to wait and close on that loan an additional 30 days because there was no way for her to, to handle both. So definitely talk to us. That's literally what we're here for. And we'll, we'll definitely be able to help. With Jeez, Julie, what a story. Oh my goodness. But you know what? It's so true. I always remind my buyers, resist, resist, resist. Resist buying anything new. Just resist. But there's always seems to be a furniture sale at the time of closing, regardless of the time of year. Exactly. So it's all about, I know it's so funny, but it's all about staying financially stable throughout the process. So that way they get a smooth clearing to close. Exactly. And then once the lender, we, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll bring up another, same, same situation with the car. One of my boroughs was like, oh my God, my car is literally the transmission blue on the side of the, of the road. And it was like a week until closing. I go, get yourself a rental car for the next week because you're not buying a new car. And that's exactly what he did. The minute that they signed the closing papers, he went straight to the car dealership and bought a new car because I don't care what you do after. So the lender will send out a clear to close once everything is in order, meaning the buyer is approved for the loan and ready for that next step. So until you get that clear to close, always talk to your realtor and your lender just to be on the same page. Absolutely. You know, changing your financial packet at the last minute is not a good idea is the reality is the lender may agree not to continue to finance the loan yep exactly unbelievable you know, right? I, that, go ahead i'm sorry no you're good go ahead you're good i didn't mean to cut you off yeah well i was going to share a story because this one always comes to mind is i was sitting at a closing table hours before we were ready to close right all we're waiting for the lender to come back and say they funded. So we're just sitting there waiting, having coffee. Well, the title company agent comes in and says, oh, we have a problem. What's the problem? The lender said they're not funding. We were sitting at the table waiting for the lender to send their money. So what happened? My client owned a business. You know what he did the day before? He went out and bought two company cars on the company you know, on the company business, thinking that because he's buying a personal property, that's over here and his business is over there. No, it all came together. Uh, it worked out. It was a day postponement. Everything got cleared up. But it's so important that, you know, we stay kind of flatlined as a buyer <laughs> until we have the until we have the keys in our hand exactly. it can happen at any time and once that financing is clear everyone can move on for those final preparations for closing and that's exciting that is really exciting so segment four closing disclosure and final walkthrough uh, what should we expect here julie so once financing is complete, the lender sends a closing disclosure to the buyer. Now, um, this document actually outlines the loan terms, the monthly payments, the closing costs, and it must be provided three days before closing. The buyer should review it closely and confirm it matches what they've agreed on. And most of the times those closing disclosures, you know, there, there might be 
one or two things that are missing that maybe the closing department has to do. But that is our time for us and the and the buyer, for the lender and the buyer to get on the same page. Yes, so this is the amount. This is the amount that's due. This is the amount that's going to come to you at closing. And it's just so that when you sit down in front of the title attorney, it's easy. Easy peasy peasy. You've already figured everything out. Everything's all finalized. And it's a fun, fun day for everybody. Absolutely. It's a, for you that it's a final check to make sure everything is accurate. On the real estate side, we do a final walkthrough to make sure the property is in its agreed upon condition. And you know what? If a seller was supposed to make repairs, this is the time we verify that those repairs are completed. So between their financial packet and the property inspection, the buyer should be good to go. Yep, and that's the last opportunity to address anything um, behind, behind besides that paperwork, just to re revisit that. And yeah, I mean, that's the really the important step. The buyer wants to ensure that they're moving into a property that's in the condition that they expect. Absolutely, it's super important. And we all do our job to make sure that that expectation is met. Let's move on to step five, our favorite day, closing day. So this is the day buyers officially become homeowners. I love it. Yes, closing day is when both the buyer and the seller meet and sign their paperwork. The buyer brings their down payment and their closing costs. The lender will provide the funds and the title is transferred at that point. So once everything's signed and recorded, the buyer receives those keys to their new home. Oh my God, what a thrilling moment. And for the seller, it's often a huge milestone as well. Yep, and both parties usually have a lot to celebrate on that day, <laughs> closing day. <laughs> we all do. We're so happy for our clients. I know. I know. I bring them a gift. You give them a gift. We're just, you know, we're ecstatic. I love closing day. All right. Segment five. Let's talk about this, Julie. Preparing to move into the new home. You know, we're all focused on closing day, but moving day is equally as important. So um, we're going to go through the five steps. And we're going to shift gears a little bit and do and prepare for moving day. So, Julie, what's your advice on getting ready for a smooth transition into the new home? Oh, what a great question. One of the best things that a buyer can do is make a checklist for everything they'll need for the move. So this includes setting up for utility, transferring your mail, updating your addresses, and even if coordinating with your moving services, that's done well in advance. Yes, planning, planning, planning. So utility company is important. The HOA, most of our Buyers are moving into a property that is managed by a homeowners association. So making sure that you check in with the HOA maybe a day before or just, you know, introduce yourself, find out what the expectation is from the HOA because all the HOAs are different and whether or not the water or the electricity or the trash is managed by the HOA because that will make a big difference for your planning as well. Exactly. So another tip is to pack strategically. So label the boxes by room and consider packing, like considering, like just taking a box and put first night box, you know, with essential like toiletries and chargers and bedding, maybe some snacks. So moving is tiring. So it's nice to have those basics on hand without rummaging through the boxes to try and find your sheets. Night box. This is the first time I've ever heard it put that way. I am going to remember that one, but it's true. You have all these boxes everywhere. You're tired and you're like, Oh, Where's the sheet? Where's the blanket? Where's my toothbrush? And, uh, you know, it becomes very stressful because you're exhausted and excited at the same time. What a fantastic tip, Julie. And I would imagine buyers would also think about changing the locks and doing somewhat of a deep clean. What are your thoughts? Oh, definitely. Changing the locks is a great security step. I'm sure that Athena can, can dive into how many people are in and out of that house during the, the buying process. And a deep clean ensures a fresh start, you know? Buyers might also consider checking the smoke detectors, the carbon monoxide alarms, and making sure that all those appliances are in working order. Yeah, great idea. Great advice. Uh, making sure those smoke detectors and the CO2 devices are in operational order is a must. I know we provide 
a checklist with all of these items on it, Julie, every time we have a closing. So um, to go over it for our audience and for our viewers, I really appreciate it. You know, the check-in list, arrange utilities, pack officially, and take care of security and cleaning tasks before for moving in is so important. Yeah, and, those, and all those steps make that process so much smoother and help turn that house into a home so much quicker. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Julie, thank you so much for breaking down both the closing process and move-in preparation. I think this is going to be incredibly helpful for our listeners. It's yep, and we're going to continue to make moving a less intimidating experience for all of our clients. So thank you and thanks to all of our listeners and our audience for joining us today. If you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe and leave a review. And also check out our other episodes on SoFlo Real Estate Show, Ask Athena and Julie Anything. Until next time, happy house hunting and closing.